Well, hey everybody, and welcome to Andrew's Amusement Academy uh, number 25. Uh, welcome in, welcome in. I've seen a number of you already in chat, so welcome, welcome. Thank you guys for stopping by. Uh, if this is your first time joining us for a uh, stream or the Andrew's Amusement Academy series, um, my name is Brian Andrzejczyk. I am a real life theme park designer, um, and I like to play RCT and Parkitect and all these other park type games and build realistic stuff in them and talk about how I build realism and how to think about all that sort of, of stuff, what to consider and all that uh, sort of thing. So um, the Amusement Academy series has typically been take a couple of coasters like this and then come back through and build a realistic layout uh, that matches you know whatever we're going for. But lately we've been building a park. Here is our little park. So this uh, started out with a wooden coaster and kind of an area around it. And then afterwards, we've sort of continued to build out this space a little bit more and uh, turn it into a full park. The theme initially was sort of questionable. We weren't quite sure where we were going to land with it. But uh, we eventually settled on a colonial America theme, sort of like rev revolutionary America, I guess, would be more accurate. So anywhere from, um, say, the 1680s to 1776. So we've got a good 100 years there worth of theming that we're looking after. So let's look at what we have so far. Uh, so we've got this wooden coaster here. So this is based off of, of Raven uh, at Holiday World. So it's called the Crucible, uh, where we've stuck with, at least for right now. We could change that later. We got this nice uh, diving turn over the water down here at the far end, and a couple hills on the way back. Another diving corner at the far end, or drop into a low to the ground corner, I guess. And then these sort of hills at the end. I do want to tunnel this part, and I wouldn't mind tunneling this section of drop too, so maybe that'll be something for us to look at today. Last time around, we started up doing some of the theming for this space, and we ended up with a solid one building, one pavilion, and one flat ride in like four hours last time. So practically cruising as far as that goes. So we ended up making this little uh, restroom building here. We made this um, uh, little pavilion that we're going to have shows in, and uh, then the uh, flat ride here that uh, I want to rework a little bit maybe and turn it into something a bit better. Uh, since the last time, we have a couple of new things. So um, Extreme 97 was uh, kind enough to make some objects for us. So we have these bin objects. Uh, so we've got this guy here. We have a sideways bin, and then we also have a vertical bin for flat rides, and then also a single unit piece as well which could be useful for that and for other things. Hey, welcome to Things on Tracks. How are you this evening? Or afternoon, I guess, or wherever it is. So those are, are pretty cool. So we're using those. Um, we did finish up the, um, the little well that we had here, and then I, kinda, I started on a, a larger building here that I'm going to try and continue through, and we'll try and finish this first, perhaps. Uh, let's see, what else, what else? Uh, I spent some time talking with a number of folks on uh, Discord and uh, things after the stream last time around, and we, we ran into a couple of discussions about the overall design of the space, and the, the first comment was, holy cow, you've got a lot of paths. If you remember right, when we ended the stream last time, this one up here, the queue area, was done in the uh, brown crazy paving. Uh, here, uh, which I actually like the look of that a lot, uh, but we didn't really use that anywhere else except for the queue over on this flat ride. So that meant we had the brown queue here, brown queue here, and then we had this tarmac pavement. We had a darker brick over here. We had a lighter brick, and the lighter brick is still here. We also had this wood. We also had this mulch, and we also had this crazy paving in the gray here. Uh, it's um, what we call path anarchy, I guess, where you have so many different kind of paths that it really just becomes 
disorganized uh, sort of cacophony of, of paths and things. So I went through and I made some edits. Uh, first of all, we changed this lighter uh, brick over here to the darker brick. Uh, this brick will also go away and this will kind of become our primary. That's not to say we can't change it in other areas, but for now we're gonna stick with this. Uh, I did change the path up here from brown uh, crazy paving to the, the gray. Um, I'll be honest, it still has to grow on me. I'm not the biggest fan of it, but we're, we're getting there. Um, so we'll, we'll see. The brown just had a nice warmth to it that I enjoyed and it kind of sat off from the gray of the building here. So, you know, it doesn't mean you have to like it right away. The other thing that we did is started to adjust some fences. So I had the post and rope, or not post and rope, this is post and rope here. I had the uh, post and mesh, uh, this guy, uh, as the dividers for the queue and also for the surroundings. And I really didn't use that anywhere else around the park. So we had, except for here, where we're dividing out our train and everything. So we had, again, picket fence, wood fence, the metal with um, the brick on the bottom fence. Uh, if you want to call this one up here a different kind of fence, we got the metal fence up here. Uh, we've, you know, we had the post and rope here as well. So again, trying to simplify out what we're using and how much we're using. So the end result was that I carried the uh, metal and brick fence around a little further. Um, I bumped it out for a section here because I really didn't want it tight to this queue the whole way. And we added a little further graveyard here, um, just like our little tableau here at the entrance. Yeah, and so that expands out a little bit. I removed some more fence here and it's just this um, curb that goes all the way around. And then we replaced the internal stuff with this post and rope, which is uh, a little less uh, in your face perhaps than some of the other ones a little less heavy texture wise. So that's where we're at right now, as far as this goes. And then let's talk about the rest of the park. So I had a nice conversation with my wife after we finished the stream last time around and she is into history. And so we talked about what all this can be and what the rest of this park might look like. So the what we've kind of settled on now is a couple of distinct themed areas. So the first one here being Salem, or you know, Salem, Massachusetts, which sort of counts as our spooky area, I suppose. Um, well, not too spooky. I mean, it's it's definitely uh, pretty pretty all right so far. Um, kid friendly spooky, I guess. I mean, as as kid friendly as as killing witches can be, I suppose. Um, but anyway, uh, we've got our entrance area here, which I'm kind of envisioning as like a a colonial Philadelphia, so some kind of recreation of Independence Hall kind of as our entrance area, and then uh, some of the streets of Philly kind of as we opened up, and uh, maybe a uh, theater here and use the terrain to our advantage so the theater kind of sits in maybe a natural valley. Well, hey, so how are you? I'm glad you could catch the stream today. Hope you're doing all right. And then we'll continue ha off, we'll have our train station here, which we'll have as we have been talking about it so far. Uh, we'll have our bridge across over here, probably a Ferris wheel again up top. Over in this area here uh, becomes Boston Harbor. So this is the colonial Boston. And uh, what I kind of envisioned this one for, we're gonna expand the water out a little bit, is we're gonna have our harbor area here. And then I want to put a splash boats in the, um, or not a splash boats, a uh, splash battle in the water here and kind of nestle it inside the harbor so we can do some cool theming and cool interaction perhaps through that whole thing. Uh, we'll probably have some kind of sailing boat recreation here um, where this kind of yellow rectangle is. This will become the cover bridge at some point. Uh, then we'll have some kind of Boston type buildings here. Uh, maybe a dark ride. Seems like a dark ride might be appropriate for this area where we're going to be pretty building heavy. Uh, so we'll have that as well. Um, over on this side, sort of as this spur, looking at this as like a Roanoke slash Jamestown type colonial area. So a little more wilderness based. Uh, some of the smaller buildings, so a um, little um, kind of fort and things like that, perhaps. Um, if we go Roanoke, which I'm kind of looking towards, you got a little bit more mystery in there, which could be cool since that was the lost 
colony. Um, and there could be some fun dark ride options for that, perhaps. The next couple areas, uh, kind of as we continue back here, I want to have this as sort of like a uh, uh, a little couple of mini areas here. So I see this as like a St. Louis gateway to the west type theme. And then this sort of wilderness back here, which I would see as maybe heavier landscape and everything, becomes like a... Um, Lewis and Clark type thing. Now, Lewis and Clark were a little bit later time-wise than uh, we're looking at for this park, but still that spirit of exploration and adventure, the we can still carry that through and make that happen. So that's the barrier back there. Next to it, I'm kind of thinking this, like, perhaps fort type area and maybe fur trading, trappers, things like that, sort of northern call it Michigan, Ohio, those sorts of areas, maybe even into Canada. And then on this section here, I, I see uh, sort of a Native American type theme, so not necessarily super stereotypical. I like to keep it at least, you know, respectful to say the, to say the least, but um, something that talks about, you know, history, culture, things like that. Maybe we can find some interesting things that we can tie to a certain specific area or, or whatever that may be so that's an option and then the last little bit here being a kids area um not quite sure where that's all going to land yet but talking like you know colonial figures as far as like maybe johnny appleseed or things things like that uh, that we could do some kind of fun little tie-ins so that's our park hopefully that sounds all right to everybody and we can We'll do something with all that. Oh, and thanks. So if I'm good, it's uh, been a long week, and I think it's going to be a uh, long next couple weeks at work, just until we get to Christmas time. But that's that's all right. Um, so first things first, let's uh, see about finishing up this building. So trying to match a similar idea from some buildings that we had seen online. And we're not necessarily married to this color scheme just yet. So as a general scaling rule here, uh, we are going with the shorter uh, second level, then the first level. So level one is a solid six tiles. So one, two, three, four, and five, six. We reach two height pieces, we can get three of them in there. Um, then we've got a five height second level, uh, which, if you'll notice, just looking at how the how this peep is scaled, uh, that's big. It's definitely bigger than uh, I think most. Um, you know, it doesn't quite quite make sense. But the the big thing with, with this is that it helps us get the detail in there. And once you can get the detail in there, then it still brings down that overall scale. But when the building height is a little bit lower, you just can't get quite as much of that space in there. So that's why we're going for this particular scale and this particular the sizing of everything. All right, so what we want to do is... Uh, first, let's jump over to here the, on the database. So this is well, not the database. Here's the database. Here's Salem. Uh, so this is the one that I was kind of looking after, um, where we have these sort of two nice roof peaks here. Uh, I need to find some windows that may match this. I do like this dark uh, wood cladding on here. Um, what we need to do is figure out how best to make this into a uh, passable... Um, uh, passable building for a theme park and the big thing with that is trying to make it into uh, something with enough entry doors and things like that uh, that it looks like a theme park type building so residential architecture being a little bit more challenging for that the other thing that's going to be a challenge to do when we look at kind of some of these bits and pieces is the way that uh, all of these different buildings project um, so you can see this one projects from the first floor onto the second floor. I'm not entirely sure we can do that with the pieces that we've got to work with, but we'll, we'll give it a shot and see what opportunities are available. I love this one too. Uh, this was sort of the form that we used for our restroom building last time, 
but uh, really liking this one very kind of classy look I do love the dark blue with the white trim that looks really really nice and then all this just nice detailing at the, the cornice and everything else and the dormer windows just quite quite nice throughout so let's uh let's see what we can do with that so we did go with the dark red on this one i wonder if we go with the darker color is it going to be immediately obvious that this whole thing is very dark so not the worst and honestly being a more spooky type area it might not be a bad thing that's a little bit darker but we don't want to go too far in that form find the right height worth of that's your trick for those is to fill in these just use the back of the of the uh the roof piece now granted sometimes you might get a little bit of line here which isn't necessarily the worst if we can find a matching uh piece then we can make it fit which we can this is matches that castle feel but if you're tight on object space or object limit which i guess neither of those things are an issue any longer that's your option Okay. Now the question remains, how do you get this overhang? And I, I think the question is going to come into you probably can't. Because um, we could do a... We can kind of do something like this where we get a little bit of that overhang challenges that we get into and some edge issues here filling in the edges and we get into uh the inability to make any of these windows a thing uh so let's see if we have you know that's a much bigger overhang so that's kind of why we were saying we would use this half half piece here because that way we're half a tile down, which is, uh, or, or I guess a quarter tile. So there's your half on this side, and here's a quarter. Uh, it's not that big of an overhang, but that's still kind of what we're looking for. But like I said, I'm not really sure that's going to work out for us, but let's um, we'll see what we can do. Uh, okay, and then... I want to say we had this wooden wall as a block, as a base block. I don't see it here. Let's take a look. So this is MK98. He does great objects. Let's see what we got. Let's see some more things that could work for us later. Rock? With roof pieces? What is this? Quarter brick block? Actually, let's get this big corrugated roof just. Ah, here we go. Wooden block fixed. Wooden block. It's already in use, apparently, so I just have it somewhere that I just haven't paid a whole lot of attention to. Okay. I'm guessing I used it here. Yep, I sure did, and I just didn't didn't realize it. So 
we can if we we want to make this a gigantic overhang we can certainly do so with this kind of a piece the problem is is that overhang looks way too big evening lyser how are you how are you this evening hopefully you had a nice weekend always a little sad to have the weekend come towards an end but bad all right uh let's maybe break this up just a little bit and maybe this one gets the one two three four always carry this through the back as well and this one sits off specifically. Ah, oh, very nice. Well, sounds like the Christmas party was good then if you had to spend the night recovering. Always a sign of a good party, perhaps. I am finally feeling better. I ended up getting my, uh, on Friday, I got my COVID booster, and then I also got uh, the flu shot at the same time. So that was uh, yeah, a little bit of uh, of a knockdown, I guess. Uh, so that was a bit of a struggle to recover from, but I am good now. Ah, good. Room. Yeah, I am boosted. My 5G signal is stronger than ever. I'm good to go for the holidays. All right. Um, my arm is hurting right now. I'll be honest, but um, hasn't been too too bad. Otherwise, initially my flu shot one was was a little a little uh, worse initially, as far as just kind of being at the injection site and and those sorts of things. So. And a one in each arm, so I figured we'll see which one was the, the likeliest to fall apart, but not too, too bad. Okay, so we are doing a 360 um, bit of uh, theming on this building, uh, only because um, we have the 360 view from everything. So we have this view from across the way. What we don't want to do is sit over here in Boston Harbor and look across and go, wow, look at the you know back end of that building. It sure looks terrible. Um, hey, welcome, Desert Nessie. Uh, yes, we do use custom scenery on this one, um, and a lot of it at that. Uh, it's a pretty custom scenery heavy park for sure. Um, I actually am not entirely convinced that we're using that we're using any uh, vanilla scenery. Uh, very, very little for sure. So I do want to use some back of house detailing here. So first of all, let's yeah, wait until I have two thousand objects. All right, track will move below. Let's get that back. So if you have the supports and you don't want them on a ride, you just order that section of ride below the um below the surface in tile inspector so we're going to take this tile again and swap track below the surface and there we go it's gone all right i think i like the idea of a wood fence sort of fits our theme and isn't too too heavy. Got a lot of handymen here, don't we? Are you be doing something else? Oh, I never connected up the pathway. I was wondering why there weren't any of the guests back in here, were there? Because uh, I raised up this whole section after a stream last time, and yeah, just to screw with everybody. Mm -hmm. 
and make them work for it. All right. And they're very like, man, I can see that coaster over there that's open and running and ready for guests and can't get to it. Hey, your coaster news. Welcome. Thanks for coming by. Thank you for the follow the other day. Uh, what does the park look like so far? That's that's pretty much it. So we've been going for, um, we've been kind of going for three different, three streams so far. I think this is stream number four now. Um, and obviously with custom scenery and with the detail level and also with the me stopping and talking, we're, we're not going to go super, super fast. So this is the park so far. This is the rest of the park. I wouldn't mind getting to some of these other things here soon enough. Um, we'll see how that goes for us. But um, we are sort of hitting our, our Salem Park or our Salem, Massachusetts area over here, uh, trying to get some architecture going on this side. And then once we get farther enough, We'll be able to continue that along. Okay. So we're we're nipping this corner a little bit, which I don't necessarily like, but not enough that it really bothers me. If we want to, we can extend it out. But I don't think I do. I don't think I want to. Uh, that's not to say I don't want some hanging vines, perhaps, um, because let's see. Continue this one more. Well, let's talk back of house areas real quick. Does every building need a back of house area? No is the general answer. It does not. For larger shops, uh, especially for restaurants, restaurants do need a back of house area, um, whether it's big or small, but you want to consider the use of the building, the functionality of it, and Kind of where where all that lands so here let's take a look okay, not that bad we're not clipping through anything we're not kind of visually hurting that 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 all looks just fine um but this one i see as a gift shop and i really don't see an issue with um anything more than kind of a storage area potentially in the back so in the morning we can have pallets delivered back here with all the merchandise and then it can get loaded up over the day and then you have potentially some other useful bits and pieces maybe this is a trash hub back here where we can bring in uh, our trash from different areas and then back here is where uh, those are dropped for the day and then they get picked up at night now one tile wide here doesn't really give us a whole lot of stuff so we can't exactly put a big dumpster back here because you're just not going to be able to get to it, it doesn't make sense um, but some other options potentially some wider wider things maybe we we could figure out some way to to get that in there so we can kind of widen this up a little bit now i don't want to totally block all of our viewpoints on this side and i don't want this to be a giant um back of house area that's just getting in the way of things. So uh, we just gotta be a little bit cautious about how big we make it, especially because this is, as I said, backing up to your main lake. So it's uh, not the best look necessarily if we don't uh, watch out. All right, here's so we have. Go with this one and with this one. Okay, so we'll do the different one in the middle, the, we'll call them A and B pieces. We'll do A, B, A, and then we'll stack another B over top of the one, and we're there. Uh, I don't really have this as a diagonal option, so we're going to leave it at that, but obviously that looks pretty good. Um, we could even spruce it up just a little bit with some quarter, quarter stuff there. Get these bulrushes. Oops, around. 
So the question ends up being, and you can see what we've done here down below, is we have some pretty hefty foliage underneath there, um, is how heavy do you want to go under the water next to kind of your coastline? And it really just depends how manicured your lake is. This is a man-made lake, I would assume, um, at least just kind of as our we're considering this from our park. So it's going to be relatively clean. Uh, relatively shallow for another thing and also subject to uh, cleaning as far as as whatever uh, whatever chemicals are put into this thing but we can at least go a little bit in there <laughs> sorry about the last one but at least you stuck around long enough when we uh, we won the, the scenario although I, I do realize that at some point here I'm gonna get to one some of these that I can't complete in one night because I really cannot keep staying up till 12 and 1 on Saturdays that or not Saturdays on Thursdays that was not not my finest hour getting up for work on Friday I was a little rough okay so we'll do a little bit of this gives us some something to work with we will uh, make this a little bit deeper right now we're only one tile down so we can drop this a little bit further here as we go around um, one of the things is that this is going to have to grow on this side, especially if we want to do the splash battle ride, which I'd like to develop here at some point today on stream if we can. Um, uh, let's look at what our, uh, options are for this. How do the streams usually go? Um, uh, it kind of depends. My standard timeline is, uh, 2 PM to 6 PM Eastern time, but, uh, it all really depends on what, uh what we're get going and all that sort of thing so uh it generally isn't going to go much longer than five hours but we'll we'll kind of play it by ear as we go along so it, it typically was that these happened on saturdays but that uh kind of went away because i got really bad about keeping track of that time frame and uh, also having things to do on saturdays so that kind of all went away all right, I do like this kind of window. We have a larger version of this, which could go downstairs, depending on how we, depending on how we do that overhang, which we still haven't quite solved. That was the, the thing that I've been conveniently avoiding here the rest of this, this time. I wish we had like a single window here that sat between the two tiles. I guess it could certainly be developed these days, but. I don't necessarily want to develop a brand new brand new thing for every time. I want to go what, two and one maybe or we can do that. The centered flower box. Oh, we had the uh, Or tile one. Maybe we don't. And treat that as one. We want, if we want to potentially, we could always treat that as a single one, because uh, we probably want to do a little bit more detail to these, uh, these at some point. I do want a little better transition between our top cap here and the roof. So let's grab a roadway line. And toss that in there and actually it's it's so kind of minimal that at the one shading side you're really not even going to see it uh, so at the best it's this angle at the worst it's this angle um, but honestly it sits pretty well uh, and just does a nice job at sort of being a devising line between texture changes we should be consistent though if we're Grabbing this guy, we'll do we'll do that. Now the real one of these, or the building we've been using for our reference anyway, has a chimney on top, right through the middle, kind of popping out. So I kind of want to carry that as thing. So 
don't know if we want to do this urban brick. Let's see what else we have. We've been using the rock wall. We do want brick in some cases, so. Hey, friend, how's it going? I did, it was insane. Um, I'm still processing how, <laughs> how the F1 race went. It was just, just absolutely insane. Um, let's keep this. I kind of like that kind of weathered brick type look. Uh, oh, how's Plopsland? You get more, which, which one were you, we have the one with Ride to Happiness? Okay, so a couple things, a couple options here. We can do a number of details on the piece here but we do want this and then maybe that It does look like a really intense coaster. It certainly seems like one of Mach's more, uh, more intense efforts. It's a good, it's a good looking ride. Okay, so we're gonna do a little bit of detailing up here because we've we kind of briefly see on some of these photos that there's definitely some nicer options here on this brick um i'm not convinced this is the right brick i kind of maybe ought to change back see if this one sits better i do like the red on top and if i go with the have the lighter red well i don't have the lighter red as an option uh okay i think i have to go with this other one uh, only because that red brick doesn't quite jive with the other red colors here but we can probably see if we can put uh -huh. It is crazy refreshing to be able to click something on Tile Inspector and automatically select it. That is so cool. Um, once again, the uh, the devs and their hard work for this new uh, save format is really killing it. Okay, so we'll call that our chimney here. And then maybe maybe we do a kind of trim of, of this. We don't really see this kind of thing used elsewhere, uh, or at least on these buildings, but it may not be a bad bad idea. Not bad, not a bad idea. Ah, oh, yeah, Nemesis, such a good, good looking coaster. I am hopefully looking forward to finally riding it next year. We'll see. And yes, to those rumors, that is another reason I am trying to get there next year. Uh, with uh, with speed. Let's cover. The top and the darker brown to match. Okay, that, that at least accentuates those windows just a little bit more. I don't think we're going to put windows on the side there, but on the back side, 
No. Hmm. It would not be a bad idea to have windows on this side. And the only reason that I say that is because as you're coming up, you don't really want your entry to this area to be the coaster and then like the side of this building. But we do want this as an entry point to the building. The question is going to be, we can't quite do this overhang. What does it look like then? It becomes this sort of standard something. Is there a way to fake the overhang? Would be kind of the next question. Could you do... We could potentially come in here with like one of these pieces and come across. Well, that doesn't look bad. I think the only challenge that I would see as far as them getting at it um, uh, for a replacement would be just the access to the site for that coaster, just the way that it's buried in there. It would be a Pretty giant crane to get there to actually replace the thing uh, and just some of it is buried so hard that it, logistically it would be very expensive but I would see them have a, I would see a hard time or have a hard time seeing them getting rid of a coaster as iconic as as that one would be okay let's try this This way we've got a space here. Let's see what our options are as far as trees go. Um, I do think that's going to be a big option there because that helps us screen pretty much that entire wall. So visually that looks way better than it did before. Uh, if we really want to screen it do that but I don't think I want to that was sad to see Blackpool tear that down I mean I understand why it was done but it's just it was certainly sad okay Use this a little bit to screen this particular section here. Um, this is a good spot to put our giant uh, weeping willow. It's well against the water there. I guess if you know that you're going to take out a coaster, you might as well talk it up and turn it into a uh, big a big thing, make some money off of it. So it's always a little bit, you know, almost pouring salt in the wounds kind of thing for enthusiasts. But I want to get rid of this section of the path. And what we're going to do is cheat a little bit here. Get our flat roof. Style, which is somewhere here it is uh, let's see we'll use brown is probably gonna be our best bet Yeah, it's, it's good to at least give it a chance when, when you can. I know 
with the wild mouse there wasn't really a chance for that but um still it's always a little sad when you can't all right so we can carry around our grass here So I've been coming around to this a little bit, and it's not something that I've always done, but I, I've i never liked putting grass or things underneath of a train, because I always like to have sort of that road bed underneath wet, and rock is usually a little much, so I kind of go at the sand. The thing is, is that, you know, looking at the ride itself, the ride coloration has the road bed there, so theoretically it can kind of sit on whatever it wants to sit on, but... I, I still like having a little bit there, but I don't necessarily mind it when it comes down to it having some grass and just cleans it up a little bit to make this a little cleaner. Not a fan of the sand under the track? Not for everybody, for sure. I, I think it's definitely one of those um, either you you're like doing it or you don't like doing it. The, I think the problem becomes on corners. Like I'm good with it every uh, on the straightaways. It's a little harder on the corner where it has a little bit of a challenge to kind of curve around. Yeah, we're gonna. We're going to stick with this. Okay. And then... Grab this one on this side and... I actually will say that this this kind of block piece sticking out, while it doesn't quite get the job done, it does reasonably feel like an overhang. I'm kind of wondering if we put the verticals in here, is it going to look better? Fred, you say fast, but we've got this much done in four streams, so we're at, what, 12 hours in year 23, and uh, well, if we're doing a full park, I wouldn't say this is fast, but maybe it's fast for me. I guess fast for me counts. Not too bad. Put the piece there, but we'll stick with that. Okay. Not the not the worst. We can we can work with that. Okay. Now as far as entries go, got to be some options here as to what we can we can do for one let's take this window transition it into the big boy down here what we could potentially look at though is window and shutters See if this lead light window is available as a wall, like centered.
It's there was a whole wall. Problem is wanting to, not wanting to look through the whole 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 set. Let's narrow it down and call it window. If we don't find it here, then that's fine. We'll just roll with what our options are. Those aren't bad, but they don't look colorable. Definitely some decent options. So there's the colorable window as far as that goes. Kind of like these. Grab those for future reference. And more of the standard ones. Okay. Pirate style window. I'll grab it just so that we can put the shutters in there. One more pass through. Okay. Well, that's okay. Kind of liking that as an option potentially. And then we'll grab our frames here, the shutters. The shutter is doubly tall. And then we'll add a planter box on it. Now we can do a couple of things with the planter box. We can either put it on the put it on the ground, or we can put it up there by the window. <clears throat> ground probably makes the most sense, although I don't necessarily like it sitting on the ground. If if it's up a little bit, it's very much a theme park um, thing because you can't close the shutter. So I kind of like the upper up high. We'll definitely go with the theme park where we're not closing the shutters. Oh, and thanks. Yeah, the uh, fix my coaster went pretty well to start. I would say uh, definitely kind of exceeded expectations as far as you know viewership and all that goes. So I will take it. <clears throat> I haven't checked to see if we got any more submissions. I saw uh, Q Dude made a comment in there that he submitted. I'll take that. All right, let's drop this, drop this, drop this. Paint this as we always do. We're going to paint everything under pathways in the tan. Just to keep it clean. Okay, so now the question becomes, what do we do with the rest of this as far as entry doors and things like that? Do we really go with an entry that's offset? Or is there another way to go about it? So let's go look at some photos. Oh, very nice. Go book your, go book your booster. Yeah. We have this sort of porch area here, which is kind of nice. House of Seven Gables. Very pretty house. These windows are quite nice. Uh, 
I'm guessing that a lot of these have some kind of side lights and some things like that. There's just a standard door. So that's more of just a standard thing, which isn't really con that doesn't really sort out for our uh, theme park options. I'm not a huge fan of going off center, but that may be how we do it. We always do. some kind of thing here in the one side which we'll also do over here that's sort of a secondary access now we want to make sure that we thicken up that wall so it doesn't look paper thin second here. Uh, yep. <laughs> Thanks, Beth. So back when we were doing the coaster series, when we were jumping back and forth between RCDB and, our, and the game, um, very, very, very often I forgot to change scenes. And I made it a drinking game that if we uh, forget to switch back from the uh, website or, or whatever to RCT, then uh, you get to take a shot. And so that was our, our uh, drinking game, our RCT drinking game. So uh, not the healthiest by any means. Uh, yeah, there was definitely some uh, pretty rough go of things in the in the early days for sure. Okay, let's let's see how this looks. I actually don't mind this because I can put like a sign on, on the thing here, so maybe it's some sort of uh oh geez, I don't know, but we'll figure it out. Uh what goes inside? Probably wood. Would make sense. I was gonna get myself a rum and coke for this. Uh, this I may still do because we're only at four. But all right, there we have our stuff. Okay. Let's make sure we get ourselves a door. But I think this little bump out back here is probably going to be the storage room. And not that we're necessarily building it out, but we're thinking about it. So we're, we're coming up with the reasons why the building is shaped like it is. And whether you build it out or not, I still recommend you think about those sorts of things. So that way it's a little easier for, for you to justify what you're doing like this lamp come on all right all booked okay let's do a wood floor outside here. Yeah, the bandstand looks good. We want to freeze some peeps and stuff up in there. We're going to have to come up with some sort of uh, a show scene, perhaps. And we can make that work. All right. So let's... Yeah, so we can we can grab an entertainer, uh, or we can grab uh, kind of any number of different options there. So maybe we do 
I'm debating how we want to do this from a landscape standpoint because they do have quite nice some kind of quite nice architecture in here. Actually what we should probably do we should do I think about it is come through here with the with the picket fences. As we have. That way we're carrying that through. And this ride is not the only thing that we have picket fences on anymore. And that way we can plant some, some greenery in here. I don't necessarily want to do actual flowers. But if you want to get just greenery in, then a green painted uh, flower garden tends to work pretty darn well. Let's see if we can get this guy to disappear behind that fence, though. Immediately. Very fine. Uh, looks like we have some pathway going through here. Get rid of that. And then this one I still kind of envision as somewhat of a pavilion type of structure here. Is it? Oh wow, it is. Holy cow. Wow. Lots of people in, in queue for this, which I guess is not surprising, considering that we have no other rides, really. We've got, although I, I guess every stream we get a little better for them, because we've got our carousel over here, which we still need to put a roof on. We've got our troika here, which I still want to fix the structure for. There's the train, and then there's the wooden coaster. So we're getting there not too bad. Um, I'd like to get to this... Um, splash battle today but i always have an apprehension about jumping across the pond well, well <laughs> metaphorically i guess but jumping to a different area and going and building something before i actually get there because I, I never want to build something so far that i get there and then i go oh crap now we're just right up against uh this whole thing and i wish it would have been two tiles to the left or something like that so that's the kind of thing that I'm trying to avoid with all of this, but we'll see. Where are we putting the bobsled? I'm glad you brought that up, because what I'm thinking about doing for the bobsled is putting it back here in the sort of wilderness exploration type area and painting it brown and having it sort of be, um, I guess, sort of like a trail or a little little slide, I guess, kind of thing. As it goes around so I'm, I'm thinking about it back here in the woods i could also potentially put it up here in the uh, roanoke area but not quite certain i kind of like it in the back though so uh, it makes sense back here more than more than anything <laughs> welcome to alaska yeah uh, does anybody else have the uh, pleasure to ride disaster transport while it was at cedar point what a unique ride uh, I'm not saying it was trash, but it was it was it was pretty trash. It, it was. I I do miss it. Actually, it was it was a fun ride. Uh, okay, let's grab our are those X. Hold on. Okay, we can use this one. Mode grass texture. We're going to drop this down. A, because it adds texture, and B, because it also acts as a walk-off mat. And helps clean the guest's feet before they go into a space. Let's do a little bit of cleaning. Mm 
it is a sad time that there are not more bobsleds still operating because they are great coasters. Uh, but I was excited to see that they are indeed painting Avalanche at King's Dominion, uh, which I had not seen until just this weekend. So that makes me happy because that's a great ride. The more, the longer it can stick around, the better. Now the peeps will generally glitch over a lot of this kind of stuff so depending on how clean you like it sometimes this can be a little bit a little bit jarring perhaps but in my opinion it is worth it for the textures uh, let's go ahead and move this outwards though Uh, you've missed very little, to be honest. Um, we're, you know, building slowly as we do. Um, and, oh, well, my guy go. That guy. There you go. Yeah, so I want to do the rest of the bobsleds that are operating, which I guess is... Hydro Parks and Blackpools. I would like to check those out at some point just because they are fun. Okay. Uh, let's. There's a little more overlap here than I. Um, and I like with the, the uh, gardens, but maybe do something about that. Hey, there's plenty of opportunity for uh, work to get to where you want to be at some point architecturally. Um, one of those things where you just got to keep on playing around with it, and then eventually you'll get to where you're happy with, and get to that point. That's not working out for us. Let's see what this does. That actually looks pretty good. Make sure this goes on the outside. There you go. And it works. Outside here. Then we'll do our green on green. Okay. That at least helps us continue that whole idea of this picket fence around here and we'll probably continue it in a few other spots further down just to help us carry that through all right let's focus on the door just a little bit so typically we don't have doors in theme parks it's rare for a large theme park to have a closed door that you have to open to get into something uh, a it's just a maintenance hassle because you're going to keep on opening doors and having wear and tear and everything else B, you're encouraging people to keep on walking by if you make them open a door every time they want to get somewhere. Um, and it's just not really a good theme park feeling uh, thing. So in general, we're seeing you know open doors with air conditioning blowing out, welcoming you into the space, and just doing everything they possibly can to make this a uh, good experience for you so you'll come in and buy stuff and spend money and whatever else that's what we're going to do here all right it looks like uh, this a little overhang initially is a closed uh closed cell on the real thing 
Not that it makes a huge, huge amount of difference, but we're gonna try and play this, play this accurately. Get rid of this guy here. That way we don't have guests walking through the corner here, but we'll grab one, two, three, four. Four. Okay. And then it looks like there's kind of almost a mesh that goes up on the side, kind of like a um, like some of these details, almost like this grid of this you know, grid of, of pieces here, just vertical. Maybe we can come up with something. Not quite feeling that stacked. This look like I could do it just the park building competitions that allow custom scenery. Uh yeah, so New Element does quite a few uh custom scenery contests. Um and I know there's other ones, I believe uh, RCT Club uh, does that as well. Uh, they're on, on just Discord. Um, but there are there are a number of ones that do. Now the thing with like the New Element contests and things like that is they're typically longer contests because they have just the added timeline of doing custom scenery. I mean, obviously you can see from my build here how long this has taken. And it's... Uh, it's certainly kind of adding up over time, um, but it's sometimes that's you know what people are looking for. All right, let's put our pathway in here. And now we can drop a couple of some things in here. We'll call this our T-shirt stall, huh? I wonder if that counts. I've been getting this interesting, that interesting glitch, um, where when I go to select a ride, it's teleporting me over to another ride that's already in progress. Um, I don't know if that's a glitch or if that's a new feature or something, but um, all right. So we want to paint this. Let's give these kind of darker red. But yeah, you you are right. <laughs> Probably worth worth the save just in case. I do find that Open RCT is relatively stable. Knock on wood. Um, but we really want to make sure we're not going to do anything stupid with it. Okay. Um, for this back of house space. Uh, maybe we do a diagonal one. There we go. So that's employees only. And what we'll do is put a hinge on this. So one, two, three, four. And right over here. And then the idea is when uh, the park is closed, this section can swing open and this section can swing up against the wall. And then you've got access to this back area here. And we'll figure out some stuff to put into that back area here a little later on. Uh, let's see, we have no real signage back here pointing us towards or pointing us in the direction of this back area, but I do want to make these a little bit taller. It's a little sad that that's going to block my transformer, but probably makes more sense this way. 
We'll see. Person's not real happy. They've been queuing for so long, although this does have a, have a pretty nice line. But hey, there's no fast pass, so everybody gets the same the same preference. Why is everybody lost here? That's interesting. Okay, heading for twist one. Where is what is twist one? Is this my music? Okay, I clear it out. That's that's very interesting seeing how they get set up. So all those guests were trying to get to the uh, scrambler that I have buried underneath the rides over here, uh, which is our uh, theme music intro for uh, the stream. That's kind of funny. I don't know why they were getting caught up here specifically. Okay. So I'll put the hat stall in here. Eventually we'll make this invisible. Um, we probably also want a souvenir stall. Now that we can select however many rides, we might as well just select pretty much all of those. Because I do like the variety. Now, that said, I typically make all of these stalls invisible, uh, except for uh, certain information stalls, because it's just nice to have um, a an identifier for your storyline. So it's kind of easy to drop in um, different things to offer a uh, some guidance for the viewer as they're looking at your park. How long am I looking for? Souvenir. I'll just skip to it. Uh, here. Oh, here it is. And we'll turn this guy on too. So, first things first. We'll drop this in. Let's give the umbrellas this kind of nice green color. So the I also enabled this clickable tooltip, which I, I actually really like this as a park building thing because it lets you drop down basically a big exclamation mark. And you can use this to help establish where your stuff is going. This is especially useful in group parks if you're going back and forth. And you just want to label something. which is what we'll do here. So this is a nice custom scenery option. Although honestly, I think this should be, if you're doing no custom scenery, I would absolutely consider bringing this in during your build process and then just removing it at the end. So between this and um, uh, between this sort of thing and then your just land landmarkings and everything else, this is, uh, in my opinion, a very useful thing to have. Um, make sure your landmarkings all sort of mean something. So for me, the the red is just sort of halfway slash uh, bounding box for our different area. The blue, or the ice, obviously water. The yellow was sort of more specific details. Like I was looking at what this Boston Harbor piece looks like and what this um, this boat would look like. Um, and then in a lot of cases, I'll use like green for ride or um, yellow for building. So you can see here, we've got this yellow for, for the various buildings here. But then as we go through, we're cleaning it up. Putting down our uh, our colors here, 
people are really not having it on the uh i guess this ride huh and the stats we have on that no real issues there ritual but maybe worth dropping a handyman here and giving him some guidance Although not near as exciting as I kind of expected. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> I actually have that turned off right now, but if we, we're going to pretend that uh, we're, uh, we're not doing so hot as far as that one goes. But let's, uh, let's pump up our excitement stats on this. Uh, all right, Ritual is not listed. Where is it? Okay, 25. There we go. That should pull in a much bigger line now. Exploding all the guests. Maybe you can, is that option still available in cheats? Or was it ever available? I know the, the early trainers had a disaster one. And none of these guys are looking so hot. Uh, what we probably ought to put down, though, is some litter bins. Things like that. I have it turned off. I can give you back your fifteen hundred uh at some point, but I will I will turn that on for future uh for future ones. So it should be automatic when when we do uh make that. But uh here let me see if I can turn it on. Give me just a minute. And I will try. Here. Hang on, we're getting there. All right, waiting for RCT2 plugin to connect. Uh, integration manager. Status connecting. I actually don't know if the new save format has broken this or not. It very well may have. So getting connections, connection issues potentially. This is a cool uh, plugin when it works. Let me message Ollie real quick and see if. We can't get that fixed. All right, we'll find out. I know what's going on there. <clears throat> okay. So we still need to sort out what the um, what this planter is going to look like here in the middle. You can kind of have this baseball diamond shaped one here. Um, it got mentioned earlier when I was talking to some other people after the stream last time that a um, little section worth of plants on the front of the ride would be nice, um, which I, I don't disagree, I would say, but it's going to skinny up our, our planter here awfully quick. Um, so maybe not the best the problem is and why it's kind of sitting over here more than anything else 
is that anything large is going to block our uh, buildings. So let's take, for example, or block our ride. So let's take, for example, this tree. Anything this bar kind of does does this, where it's going to get in front of the ride a little bit. So you could probably go this route. I would probably pick the thing that's least intrusive, which this is a good option for that. Uh, although this isn't necessarily a planter tree, this is a pretty big one. Uh, the Chinese cedar is a good option for it. Um, and honestly, this is one of the right or one of the trees that I use most often in planters because it's kind of the most see-through and really doesn't get in the way of a lot of things. It could be, although if I'm going to do a planter, I like to at least get some height into there, just some natural shade if we can avoid it. Um, or if we can kind of do that, but it could just be something lower. I like to give it more of a reason for existing, I should say. All right, let's give ourselves some employee access notices here. Well, that's another thought is, is a statue or some kind of thing like that um, we could carry on the Salem something or another and do some sort of more ominous little thing I mean I know they were witches were burned or hung or you know a number of other things so we could do that if we can find something that's a little bit tasteful that what we want we want a brighter with actual yellow okay that yeah, sits there nicely uh, we probably do need a trim piece on the edge here. Trying to find a thin enough piece. I do encourage trim on pretty much everything uh, if you can find a subtle enough piece. Uh, honestly, one of my larger complaints with Parkitect so far, uh, just playing that, is that every piece is gigantic and cartoony. It's like building with Duplo instead of Lego. Um, and that is just a little bit of a challenge as far as as, as I get into playing with the game. Um, but it's uh, you know something that I'm trying to kind of work out. Oop, Ali said it is very likely broken, but he's gonna give it a check. In some in some pieces you can scale them in park tech, not all of them. So the and granted there are probably custom scenery pieces that that do this better, but the vanilla game base game, uh, the trim pieces and borders and things like that you cannot scale. That you know, it could be could be a statue of you know the witches as far as that goes, and and the question becomes, are we are we time traveling? Like, is is this theme time travel? Are we going back to the Sand the Witch Trial days and experiencing it at that point, or are we visiting Salem in modern day times in this kind of themed environment, and we're learning about what happened then? Um, so that's that's an option to think about. Is where where does it sit? So you have to answer that question for yourself at some point. Um, my thought right now is that it's not time travel, but I don't know. It's a good question. And it's where do you, where, where is it? Are you actually being transported back to the, uh, that area? I mean, it's definitely a little cleaner than most. I feel like if we really wanted to go, go super historic, we would, you know, have dirt roads and things like that. But we're trying to theme parkify the whole thing, as we've discussed a couple of times. So definitely working on some options there for what it could be. Uh, 
something like that. I think to Fred's point earlier, I'm going to get rid of the get rid of the markings underneath the train here. And since we want to try and keep our path logic correct, might as well use the um, the metal. This gives us a little bit of space to work with here. It would be cool to have a, and I, I don't know, I guess, if this is a plug-in or what, this could be but a, an option that would let you color land tiles in uh, diagonal sections. So like it would be really wonderful if I could do this half in the grass and this half in the grass and dirt. That's a good way to think about it. So modern day Salem, but which is cursed remains covering and you know kind of overarching that theme. That makes sense. I'm just trying to think about it in a a level of historical context that that makes some sense to me. Okay. Gonna put our couple trees here. We do want a little bit darker stuff. Can we get one more dark tree in here? I think we'll make that work. There's an NCSO hack for that. Um, oh, is it just, I know, um, so the, it's the, the hack of lowering the different land sections like this so that you get your, you get the visible diagonal as far as that goes. So kind of a fun, a fun hack is if you do, lower the section of land and then you look at it from only this side you now have a diagonal fence and you haven't used any diagonal pieces and if you do it you know properly and plant the heck out of this side you'll never know yeah the heck story is a cool one i, I do like the, the kind of story building for that one i, I that i feel like is a cool scary we'll call it horror theme even though i think that's maybe a little generous um but that's a cool that's a cool way to look at it and i feel like back when alton was at more of its peak as far as that goes like storytelling and and the like oops that's not what i wanted but i'll take it Those are the things that before I would have had to really worry about what all I was putting down um, because I, I would know that I'm going to have to worry about it later because of um, uh, because of the object limit. But now I don't really have to worry about that as much, which is really freeing, I would say. Yeah, the fact that the chain dog is a real thing is, is cool. Uh, it makes it that much more kind of realistic. Okay. I'm going to go a little bit heavier here on the bushes and landscaping, which is, is probably okay. And then this way, on the outside of the fence, which is kind of where we are now, I would say, is kind of considered a little more wild, perhaps a little more... Um, 
a little more rugged. And then inside, which is on this side, it's a little more manicured. Yeah, some of those madhouse madhouse type rides can really screw with you. Um, I, I the first one that we did or that I had ever done was kind of tame, and so I didn't really think much of it. And then all of a sudden, I did one that was really good and uh, had a lot of motion to it and everything. And that that knocked me down a little bit. I was not expecting that sort of level of of movement and and whatever. There's a lot going on there. You want this? I'll have to sort of work out how we're going to transition out um, as we get down this way and kind of where that where that goes. <clears throat> I can see us sort of continuing this asphalt pathway. I may change the overall texture of it at some point, but we're not going to get there yet. So I, I really don't ever use the actual pathway you know, types. Really, the only pathway type I'm ever going to use is the invisible. And the reason is it just gives me more flexibility to kind of do whatever and then come back and... Um, and put the actual paths where I need them to. And you can make it as wide or as narrow as you want. And then you can come back with only one invisible path if you want to do it that way. Or you can come back with more and do it a little bit differently. Hey, Belgian guy. You're welcome. Thank you very much. We haven't really done a whole lot today. We've kind of done this building, and that's pretty much it. But I think we're making overall improvements to the whole space here. All right, so let's think about some signage because we probably want to do something with that. Let's um, let's see. We did this little sign on this side, which I kind of like the usage of that. Maybe we grab a different one here. Maybe not. I do kind of like this this sign and give it a. Color option. Red, some orange maybe. The orange is a little much, I think. So if we oh. change to the red, I think it'll look a little better. And I realize that that's not actually change to the red. That changed the wrong one, that's why. Oh, oh. Made that better. <clears throat> better, better. Okay. Um, I think I am going to put some windows on this side. Uh, and I'm still not totally convinced that these are done yet. I think we could come back with some, some other details on this side and figure out what those become. Uh, I don't know what that's going to be just yet, but... Something. Okay. And then get this Victorian roof rail. Thank you. Thank you. I'm actually really happy with how this is turning out. It's one of those that always takes a little while, but once it gets there, it starts to shape up a little bit. And I think we're Turn it out into something pretty decent. I don't want to go too sign heavy, but I kind of like this hanging sign too. Maybe for the next building. Now, could we put shutters? I guess we could actually. I think these. 
are about the same size. Okay, they're a little bit smaller. I was gonna say we could put the those pieces there. Hmm. Do I like this better? I don't think I do. These are larger than I thought they were. Okay. Let's go back to what it is. Let's not second guess ourselves right now. Plenty of time for that later. <clears throat> okay. I don't think I need anything on this facade just yet. We might add a couple little details here and there, but on the whole, we're really not seeing that for one, and um, it's just not something we're going to run into. Um, that might give us an overhang back here. Uh, and I'm going to do this in a half tile set. Uh, only because it'll give us it'll give us just a little bit of rain protection back here for our employees, and it's still reasonably deep. Okay. So tentatively, now we're going to call that building complete, and the next step is to do something with this plot of land. So we have have this kind of darker um, lap board, clapboard siding, I guess. Um, I kind of want to go about using something else for this next section, but I'm not quite sure what just yet. Um, just because I know we've used this one pretty heavily on everything so far, so maybe we use something else. Uh, Got some stucco texturing. Uh, the problem is, is that, that it is what it is, and this is used pretty heavily through the whole thing. All uh, right, through the whole area for kind of real life. So let's uh, let's go back to our colonial architecture here. So I mean, that's the this is the problem. We got this this type of siding. There's this type of siding, which is essentially the same. Same sort of thing. This is like a cedar shake, which may exist. We'll have to look at that. This is cool. I like this with um, with a uh, all the vines and everything else. We do have brick. Brick is a good thought that we can go through. We're gonna have brick pretty much everywhere else. Um, this is kind of nice. Hello, architecture and chimneys, dormers, classical cornice, coins, blinds. That's actually quite nice. Okay, so let's let's do some massing here and see what this looks like if we we were to build up a building here. How high can we go? So the answer to me is that high, because that does not block our flat ride. And on this side, it's still visible. I could do that abandoned element. I think if I want to do abandoned, I might do that as our gift shop over here, uh, where you're coming out from after the ride. So maybe this is like the aftermath where you're sort of abandoned. Um, I feel like in the village, I still want it to be at least relatively whole, but maybe not totally. So we'll see. I think that's a good option of the consider. Ah, crap. Drink. <laughs> there it is. Well, that's that's over two today. Pretty bad. That's really bad. Eggs. Okay. So urban brick we've got as an option. Now the problem is is that I don't want to I don't want to screw myself for the rest of the spaces here. 
So this urban brick is a nice a nice texture. And we did we thought about using it here on the the um chimneys, but we're, we went with that rock instead. So maybe we want I don't know. Hydrate points. Not a bad idea. And I, I need some I need some new redemption things. We should have have that. So I'm taking suggestions. Well, I will mark down hydrate as as an option. Maybe like a brick pavilion, perhaps, is a good way to do it. We've got sort of the. I'm trying to not to usurp the um, themes that I will be doing in other locations. Um, so trying to avoid some of that. Uh, we probably do need a, a church of some kind in this space, just based on kind of where we're going. Oh, well, duh. Done. It's already there. Use the palette for 2k redemption. <laughs> that would be like 100k. <laughs> Wait, eventually I would like to have more of like an RCT Chaos stream where we do things like that, like change the palette or um, things like that. Or hang red and blue palette. What is the red and blue palette? I don't know. Do I have that one? What's it called? Oh, there it is. Terror Hank Red and Blue. Uh, English with Extra Gray. I'm curious. Oh my god. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Here's our building. Very green. Church is uh, falling into the void. I like that the wood coaster is just chilling there. Like, the wood coaster is totally fine, and that brown's totally all right. But, yeah, we're, uh, wow. How do I get back? I can't even see. All right, object selection. Damn it. All right. Get rid of that. Let's go to, go to the Tokyo Dome palette here briefly while we select other things. Yeah, not, not a fan of that one at all. Holy cow. All right. Where were we? English palette E. It's amazing how many English palettes there are now. English palette PM. Oh, here we go. You can always do this park at night. There we go. Very nice. Okay. So, maybe brick. Maybe that's an option for us. We could do this kind of rock color sort of rubble rock doesn't necessarily make a good brick but i do like the texture there's also kind of standard brick We know that we want a two by um, kind of thing, and we probably want to do the Spanish roof only because we haven't done haven't done that. Yeah, I think the red is an option for us. I think there's also an option for maybe a third color too. Uh, we could pretty easily bring in some other thoughts i'm seeing as i scroll through the photos a lot of like dark blue and a lot of pale yellow um, i don't really think we have a pale yellow um oof. Uh, yeah that's too much um i think the light tan is an option 
Um, I had tried to bring in a pale yellow to this palette earlier, and I don't think... Let me see here. I think the Washu's on palette at one point had a pale yellow. Yeah, it was sort of a paler yellow color. Still pretty, pretty heavy. Hmm. Stick with my English palette. Yeah, the emerald green is an option too. This. Uh, a darker green i do i do like that one in general um i have a feeling we're going to be using that pretty heavily in some of the other areas too but it feels like this building ought to be similarly stately to this one uh, only because it's kind of right next to the thing I'd put like a covering over the, the backside for the train as well, but I think that might not be the best look. Uh, okay, so this is, we know, our overall height. And we're going to mark that with this. Yeah, we've got the white and gray too. Um, I did have a comment at one point that this roof would be better suited as black, uh, just to really make that pop. Um, and I did paint it black at one point, point. it did look pretty nice. Um, but I kind of like it still as thing as is. Um, let me grab the double height brick because I, I like using, if we're going to use it, let's that. Okay, come on. It's down here. Problem is all the mundane ones that you don't really think about very often. Um, is what actually are they called? Because this one is called. Uh, can't see what the contrast. So this is just called wall. Which this, among all things, is why you should properly label your objects. Why I appreciate people who do properly label their objects. Oh, well, brick. I guess I can also just pop open one of my other parks and figure out where it is. Yeah, it's just the one there. Well, thank you, Lester. Uh, thanks for stopping by and hanging out. And hopefully have a good night, a good week to come. We will be streaming next Thursday uh, for Park Tech uh, Scenario Number 5. All right, let's, uh, let's have a look and see where that is. Uh, all right, while she's on. I think I have it in while she's on. Uh, Be mad if I don't. Maybe I didn't. Here it is. A large stone wall. God. Okay. So you're looking for a large stone wall, which is not the most descriptive. Okay. A large. Oh, look, there's all sorts of options here. 
This one does have the coins on the side, which is nice. All right. Got this. We also have the stone wall option here. All right. What do you all think? Looking for some opinions here. Let's get rid of this background, which looks bad. If we're going to build a building here out of brick, we like the kind of more standard stone or the little crunchier stone here. And then let's say that we're going to use the Spanish tile. Hi, dog. Probably hear the dog who's wanting to play. <laughs> okay. So those those kind of are our options as far as what we can do there. I would like to see if somebody can build us a steeper Spanish uh, Spanish one. There's some options. The left gives us a little more opportunity because there's there's objects of all sorts of shapes in that texture. So we have some ability to do do a little more with it, I would say. But yeah, the brick on the right does certainly match the other building a little bit better. So maybe we start there. And since we're not doing a whole lot of interesting stuff with this building, we can probably get away with it. And I might if we can't we might just go with the shingle roof and then we'll swap that out here a little later let's clear this clear this this will be one of those examples of a building that does not have a back of house area even if we wanted one, there's really no space for it. But this this backspace here and probably the storage area uh, become sort of a commissary location for this space. And I'm trying to see if there are any good shots of any good shots of like covering or other things like that. There really aren't. So maybe this actually becomes two buildings. Maybe we do a little more. I guess the question is, can we, can we do this while it's still, if we cut in there like this, is it still going to look OK? That become too claustrophobic for that space. I think it does. We can't go any further over you know, because of the nature of how we're set here. Mm -hmm. Because if we go this way, 
we can, for example, do some kind of a roof like this. And if we do another building over here, we can do this one with a roof like this. And we have two little the spaces here all nicely clumped up together. But we do, we do like this section, and we did just spend a bunch of time building a 2x4 plus 2 on the back side building, which is pretty substantial, so we probably want to at least match that same look. Um, what we might do down here is try and do either on the diagonal or maybe not. Maybe it's just a little plaza here where we set this up on the flat section here and do a little square with more... A traditional Salem-esque stuff like um, just smaller downtown type buildings and then maybe it's like look at this uh, let me save first just so I don't reload if I don't like this but maybe we're coming down here with this gift shop on the one side and now we've got another one here We've got another one here. We've got another building here. And then you can do you know, whatever. And then we have just a little plaza here. And then that leads into the space. And then this is sort of our entry to the area. Um, perhaps the train ends up sliding a little bit to the side just because we know we're going to expand this pond. Um, or lake, I guess. So that could be a better option. Might as well go ahead and build this out just a little bit so we can kind of get, get ourselves at least in that mindset of what we're going to do. Oops. Keep it at least a little bit varied for now. All right. Okay. So now let's get back to see what the two we can do with this building. Right now we're eight high. And I'm just kind of briefly checking back at some of this architecture just to kind of see what we see what we can do with it. We don't see a whole lot of adornment as far as different visuals go. A lot of these are just sort of federal style, uh, federal style type stuff. Hey, welcome, observe the train. How are you? Observe the train. It reminds me of uh, Watch the Tram Car, please, from uh, Wildwood, New Jersey. Uh, welcome in. Thanks for catching the stream. We are in the process of building out our uh, little theme park here that we've been working on. So uh, making slow but steady progress because we are building with uh, custom scenery, which always adds a little bit of time to the overall. Actually... Yonder is a good location. I wonder. Ooh. Ah, uh, shoot. 
I was going to say I really like this as an option, and then it doesn't line up in the middle there, but I kind of like this as potentially an option for this building. Let's, uh, let's look at this. Could we go... Yellow? Yellow might be a little too yellow. It's a little too in your face. Because you can represent glass if you want with like the darker, darker blue options, but a lot of times it just doesn't look good. Um, so you can do the kind of aqua color or glass, but a lot of times it just looks bad. Um, like this has a texture to it. It's not an actual see-through glass. We probably want to go one more up and then have... I'm not going to use this here, but this is a good option for the future. Okay, what is a good offset from red? Blacks, browns, whites. Okay, a lot of these have white. The white ends up looking awfully bright. If we tone it down to the brown, then we have the same overall texture but I like this enough to make me explore some other options for internal those shutters I kinda like that that's a good look okay and then if we take This guy. Now the question is just going to be what does the, the front door kind of look like because we don't have we don't have it continuing across. Do we go for a fifth one? That's going to be way too big, I think. Do we go for just a third one? I think that may be the play. And then that outside over there becomes maybe a little pavilion space or something else. But then this becomes our entry feature. Now right, let's get ourselves a nice window here. It'll fit well. Come on. I don't like the arch on that one. I already used that one. These, I think we established, are too gigantic. Actually, they right now, I think they've got too much depth. Like, whatever they're doing on the inside there doesn't really work for me. Um, I think these 1K windows might be our best option. They actually sit pretty well here up top. Put it on the wrong tile? Maybe. Okay. So we'll get rid of this side and figure out something else that's going to go there. Cut down this space. The question is, how much do we want to cut it down by? To make that more kind of door sized. Because once again, we're not going to use the doors themselves. We'll keep that all pretty 
straightforward. Let's uh, once again look to wood probably on the inside. And then the question is, do we want to carry that out or what do we want to do for it? We probably do want some kind of a, whether it's a pediment or Else. Think about that in a minute. Meantime, get ourselves a black roof, red wall. Building is looking a little stubby at the moment, I think. Uh, we'll go one higher on the roof. That way I can get us an overhang. I think will be important as far as just the overall visual goes of this whole thing. Well, let's let's stick with that. And we're doing this sort of interesting mansard roof. Not tall enough for us to be able to do a um uh a dormer window in it. A little bit sad. Are you typically a no custom scenery builder? Uh, it, it's one of those things that I can absolutely understand for all of the times that I spent away from the game for like a couple months or a year or whatever, come back and you just don't know what even the current custom scenery is. I like think at the time it's just sort of relearning, like relearning how to ride a bike. Um, but uh, it's honestly really, really nice once you have the ability to know what's there um, which is why i recommend typically um design or going with a workbench that already exists um and starting with that and then modifying it so this one i use is the extreme 97 2021 workbench and as you can see by my fumbling trying to find this particular object um it's a lot of just trying to see what you can even find um but the idea is once you get to a certain point then you can kind of see what's available and you can select uh all the stuff that fits your fits you kind of best um so i know that you know there's a certain scenery type of something and i might have seen it in other parks so i'll go look up what that scenery type is i'll go get it i'll bring it back i'll add it into my thing here and then be off and running so that's the sort of thing that, that helps from, um, uh, for me anyway. So I've just been adding scenery over the past couple of streams, especially now with the new save format where we've got, you know, boatloads of space to dump different stuff into. It's definitely helping, but I'm glad that uh, my videos are helping you get back going. Um, it's, it's always kind of nice to come back to it, especially, you know, just I've been... Like I said, I spent plenty of time where I was gone for multiple years or more at a time. And then just to kind of get back to it, it's always sort of a nice, nice thing. Okay. See if we can make this work. Not, okay, we can. The order of tile matters as far as that goes, because that lets us get in front of the 
coins that we're putting on the side. Hey there, how are you? Up and by. Haven't seen you in a while. All right, so we can get rid of this. Although probably worth you know, double checking now. Let's see how our sight lines go. Not bad. Not bad at all. Okay, we're going to use this Victorian roofer out here to solve what I was trying to get rid of that little bit of scenery that was popping up through the trim piece there. Just use this to get rid of it. Okay. I think we've talked before on this one, but there's sort of two options for your uh, kind of edge pieces here. Um, you can either fill it in like this, or you can come back across and just fill it in standard um, if your roof pieces don't match. So that's what I'm doing here because I feel like it matches a little bit better. The middle of the night, or I thought you were UK. I guess it is night now we're not in the middle of it but all right Oop. put this trim here solve that up just a little bit okay i guess it is only 518. Uh, not paying too much attention there all right i will put a door on this side i think only because then I don't have to carve this out fully. Uh, let's see. One doesn't really fit with the texture so super well. in that color it's fine okay we want to add a little bit of a pediment here We can either return it on the sides. They work best. We're just encroaching into our uh, shutters here on the side a little bit, but. So depending on how we do this, if we actually get rid of these pieces, I could one here and give this a open door sort of thing like this. And what I'd like to do then is go back through here and eliminate that pathway. There are those two. This one. If I spent time watching too many streams, I would have, like, the, I already do, and I have a terrible sleep schedule as well, but I can't, I can't afford it, I just, I need my sleep well more than I used to. Okay. 
on the back we'll do pants and on the front we will do flowers make one green and one yellow just to give it a little bit more uh, variety there That wouldn't have been a bad idea for right there, maybe. But oof, four to five hours. Yikes! I got to get into the sixes if I'm gonna be any kind of functional. I mean, I can I can make it. It's just not my favorite. Because I know that I'm gonna be running around all day and stuff like that okay so we've got a structure here um i don't know if i want to do anything on that side but i do want some hanging signs because we said we were going to use that for the other one let's do it on this one we'll make it uh say that itself can be that, and then maybe we'll do a a green sign since we're taking green from this. Yeah, I could see that being very frustrating. Okay, there we've got some options. I'd like to put in some kind of a souvenir type stall, but I don't know which one will do. So as a general rule in realism type parks, you don't want to put in um, hat problems or, or problems. I'm reading the chat there. <laughs> um, you don't want to put in hat stalls. You don't want to put in T-shirt stalls. Um, you don't want to put in balloon stalls. Because that means after a while, everybody is going to have a balloon, everybody's going to have a hat, and everybody's going to have a t-shirt. And while that works, you know, if you're doing scenario type play, which, sure, that makes sense. If you're not doing that, it means that you're going to have a huge amount of um, guests that all look exactly the same. And you want that variety because it's going to look really strange overall for your park. If you have all the guests wearing the same hat and all the guests wearing you know, the same different stuff. So you want to do a little bit of variety there, um, which is why I recommend not placing some of those things. Uh, okay, let's grab this and put it on the back side here. And... We had the and the vines the last time on the other one, and what better way to? Uh, oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with how it's turned out. You know, we're making slow but steady progress, as is pretty typical when you're doing custom scenery work. We need a little bit of something here at the bottom that this can. These vines can spring from. And then I think we'd like to stick a tree between these two just to help us get a little bit of something going on. Let's see what our tree option is. Hmm. I think either the dark tree or this Liam tree. Actually, that works pretty well. Yeah, the building is very bland with the with the brown on the brown. Um, we're we're basing it off of um, Salem, Massachusetts, uh, where we're looking at some um, 
kind of uh, darker type stuff. So this this kind of thing in particular. Um, so this is sort of what we're we're working from, um, which a little bit darker. Uh, obviously, being a theme park, we're trying to brighten it up some. So we have our picket fence in the front, some of this more greenery and things like that to help uh, brighten it up. Um, geographically, from a location for the whole park standpoint, I think of it as the Northeast. Um, so New England, U.S. type area. Um, potentially like in upstate New York. Potentially like a Massachusetts, Connecticut. That sort of, that sort of space. Um, that's sort of what our tree selection is trying to show off. Um, the idea is... We're, we're having this sort of colonial, or not, I keep saying colonial, but I guess it's colonial slash revolutionary America type theme. So those sorts of, those sorts of themes in a space where that would have generally happened. So New England, it could be Pennsylvania, could be, could even be Ohio maybe, but I really think of it as Northeast. I guess in my head, it's like a Massachusetts type, type place. So actually, for, for those who weren't here in the beginning, just sort of a, a little overview of what we're going to be doing at some point here. So this is a revolutionary America-themed park. So kind of think Disney's America, just not Disney. Um, we have our front entry area here, which is going to be sort of Philadelphia, revolutionary Philadelphia. Uh, so we'll have more or less a recreation of Independence Hall and then some other different buildings and stuff through the city like a, a nice uh, theater in the round or something, or just or amphitheater type thing following the terrain. Um, then we spill kind of down into the park itself. Left side gets your Salem, Massachusetts type um, spooky theme. Uh, right side here, there's a little spur that goes back to a Jamestown slash Roanoke kind of uh, colonial village type area. Maybe Roanoke because we get the mystery or the mystery aspect to it. The corner one here and probably the anchor area for the whole park is going to be the Boston uh, Boston Harbor type area. Uh, so this one's going to be heavy on buildings. So this will probably be our most architecturally heavy area uh, right here. So we'll have the harbor out here. I want to put a splash battle in the harbor, uh, which I think could be a fun, fun ride. And of course, we'll have the uh, teacups for the Boston Tea Party uh, because why not? I feel like you have to. Um, and then... Um, we'll have over here our gateway to the west, uh, so St. Louis, and uh, running over to this side, kind of crossing the train tracks, crossing the river, you head into the wilderness. Uh, so this is going to be like the Lewis and Clark exploration type area. Uh, on this side of the gateway to the west, we'll have the uh, you know, uh, trading post, trappers, fur, fur traders sort of thing on this side. Connected to those is some kind of a land celebrating the Native American culture and things like that. And um, then back over here, I will have our kids area kind of bumping off here, maybe like Johnny Appleseed, something, you know, simple as far as that goes. But um, <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, it's kind of a light, light-ish take on the American history. I mean, I'm going to have somewhat well researched because i just like to be that way but i'm also not going to take it too too seriously although granted our first themed area is themed after people getting killed so it's a little a little heavier if you think about it too hard so try not to try not to do that uh, <laughs> let's build on cruise control and realize everything you build is terrible <laughs> see my, my problem is that i I spend too much time going back and forth on individual things and it just takes quite a while until I build up to a point where I get something that I like. So in general, I like all of this so far and I may still change some of it here and there, but so far I'm, I'm actually pretty pleased with all this. Um, could absolutely change and probably will absolutely change, but it's, it's getting there. So I, I don't have, if, if you count, I guess we kind of consider the build career sort of when I 
first got into doing good custom scenery and actually spent time building a um uh, building proper parks i really only have three good realistic solo parks in my what 20 year rct career um but it's uh, i've got a number of group parks and other things like that plenty of other things that i can at least say but it's um you know it certainly takes some time and it takes a little bit to get get going um but i don't know well you gotta start somewhere i mean it's it takes you a little while for me it takes me usually for for these types of parks it'll usually take me um a couple of years to put a park together and i would think based on our current pace and if i keep streaming this every week that'll be a good impetus to keep on going on this this one could take us to two more two to uh, years or or could do less I mean, we'll see i'm hoping it'll be less uh all right well, let's see if we can't do something with this I kind of want a seating area of some kind I mean that it, it is also tough as you start to are in the process of sort of learning your style and learning what works, what doesn't, and everything, especially when it takes a long time, um, it, uh, to not quite know how it's going to be received can be a little bit daunting, and you can kind of look at it and go, oh, geez, I spent all this time and people don't like it, but as long as you're happy with it, that's good, and just take the feedback to, um, you know, to heart for later if you really think you do want to uh, go that way, but I mean, remember, you're not building for anybody but yourself. So take your, uh, make sure you're happy with it before you get anywhere else. Uh, let's do diagonal here. I don't know if I really like this. As a move like this, but think about this. Let's go and gray here because I'm I've used enough gray that it's probably fine to do that. And we'll put some columns on this. Four. Four. Got it right. Yep. <clears throat> Actually, this roof doesn't bother me as much as I thought it was going to initially. I'm kind of okay with that. Roof on the queue. What roof on the queue? Oh, there it is. Okay, we are front on that one, so here we go. A good catch. There we go. A little better. Yeah, the N NCSO um, is, it, it constantly impresses me how well people get on with doing some of those really cool uh, cool builds with NCSO. I've I find it very hard, having done custom scenery now, to get back to that point where I'm doing 
uh, NCSO type work. I, I did one NCSO park in January. I entered the DKMP uh, January monthly contest with uh, with swag, and uh, I, I put out a park that I was proud of, but it was a struggle, and I was having a real hard time doing it. So um, it's one of those things that I, I absolutely respect the people who do those parks because I I can't I can't do a very good NCSO type work. Uh, it's, it definitely is not not for me. All right. Darker tree, and let's get some darker, darker bush going in here. Realized I never knew yeah, this one plump plant. Ah, I got you. Okay. Yeah, no, it's, you know, custom scenery is certainly a learning experience. It's it's a learning experience, A, in knowing what's out there, and B, knowing how best to use it. And the problem is you you can't fix bad form with custom scenery. Like, it only, it's, you can't just magically make it better. So it's one of those things where you really have to, um, you have to attack it from a standpoint of uh, knowing what you want to build structurally and form wise and using the custom scenery to essentially enhance that. Um, that's where the challenge comes. Um, cause I, I love doing custom supports and we'll have a stream where we do that at some point here because that'll be happening. Uh, okay. I kind of like that actually with, all of the peeps, a big stack of peeps coming in there. Wow, a lot of repeat riders, it looks like. Um, sports are very polarizing. A lot of people don't like them very much. And hey, remember earlier where I was saying don't put hat stalls and don't put t-shirt stalls? Look at how many people are wearing dark red shirts. So there we go. That was a mistake. We'll go ahead and delete that. And I will put in just another another one of these, I guess. And we'll keep it for the dark green umbrellas, I think. You can you can really make some good looking supports now with the single rail coaster. Um uh, that's I, I that I am impressed by is just how well that tends to work these days. Supports have our support. Well done. <laughs> yeah, it's it's one of those things that um that I I like I like doing the support sometimes until they glitch through and just become annoying. But B and M ones are are pretty straightforward, pretty easy um, to me. But the the ones that are more fun typically are like arrow supports or things that have kind of more unique shaping and everything. We did say at one point that we were going to do um, some custom supports on this guy on the side. And I may still do that. I'm not sure if I'm going to do that on stream or not, but um, it, it could be could be kind of fun. Um, it's I, I think the the result is what I enjoy necessarily more, probably more than actual doing of the supports. Um, we did say we were going to try and do some of these um, tunnels. Let's, uh... Yeah, good truss structure like that is great. Or or on uh, the Washuzan, um Park, my uh, Japanese park, um, 
that arrow coaster and the Ultra Twister had pretty complicated supports as far as just uh, lattice type structures. But oh man, the the satisfaction of actually getting it done was just it it made it all very very worth it. Okay, probably like a five height sort of thing. I almost see this as doing the wood coaster. Let's let's explore some options here. So we can do do this potentially. Might actually be a little bit low. I might have to go just slightly higher. Oops. Oh. Sorry, everybody. Well, that's interesting. Did anybody notice what happened there? That all of this suddenly turned to rock and the scenery went away? Does that happen now when the train crashes? That's interesting. I did I don't want to test this theory. Uh, No entrances, the sprite's not there for it. Um, okay. Uh, get some scenery here around this thing. Power launch. Fascinating. Has anybody else figured that out yet? Does it, I have not seen anybody post about that. Um, which that's that's very cool. Huh. Might be the first. Woo, got the scoop. Uh okay, well. Interesting. Well you certainly you saw it first here, everybody. It's a good thing I didn't crash it into one of the buildings I just spent the entire stream making. Because that would have sucked. Huh. That's fascinating. Huh. Yeah, I'm still kind of in, in shock at that. For those of you who have been into RCT uh, lore over... Uh, over time um or some of the original rct stuff do you remember there used to be um plans to have um like if the coaster crashes the track would get like mangled and and messed up um uh, there's some sprites for kind of screwed up track like that which i thought was kind of interesting let's go all right let's first uh, renew rides, reset crash status. It is renewed. I can't find the crucible. Tyler, what's wrong with you? You're not even close to it. Tyler, biomath. 
What are we already doing with our exercise section? Not too bad. Okay. Um, I wanted to try one other thing with this and see if we can't layer on um, something like this that at least kind of fills in the hole. That direction looks fine, but. It eh, doesn't quite do the job. Although, to be fair, once we get in scenery here, It might be okay. What we might also want to do is just build this out of. I think by now we have enough track pieces that it, or, or not track pieces, but scenery pieces that it doesn't really make sense to try and do this anymore. Like it would seem that it would make a lot more sense to just come back through here with diagonal these sorts of diagonal pieces and then just say how we're gonna this. Uh, oh, they could be a plugin. It could absolutely be a plugin. Yeah, that's it is a plugin. False alarm. I have a plugin called Crash Effects that I'm ninety nine percent sure. Now that you say that, is probably where this whole thing lies so good good thought there actually that's a really good thought okay and yeah that makes a lot more sense than than not so yeah very very good thought all right I wanted to see there was some kind of weird shaped metal roofs here. I do like this thatch roof with the all sorts of pieces. Start down at the bottom because there's usually more interesting stuff down here. A little thatch roof. I think it's these. Taylor roof slanted. We have the I guess I thought those were kind of have a cover to them. But well thanks for stopping by observe the train. Welcome or uh, hopefully we'll see you back next time. Okay. 
Where would this piece be? I, I like the idea of having a, a slight incline before before and at the end of the tunnel, but I don't think it's to be because I can't quite find any pieces that work well for that. I really don't see the pieces on that side, so it really doesn't matter. We will go through just everything. Once again, we can't really see the edges because I'd probably go in here and put some thickness to the uh, the various edge pieces there, but. This is going to be easier for me to just replace all of these than it is to adjust them in Tile Inspector because they're glitching out because they were second or the first thing that was built. And if we just go back through here and build the second, yeah, they'll all be behind. So if you have glitching, don't immediately throw it away. Play around with it in Tile Inspector or delete it and rebuild it and see what happens. There we go. Uh, except for this. Uh, actually, no, it seems like we're all right. Just however that displays. <clears throat> okay. There's our first tunnel. We'll probably do a similar tunnel over on this side. Yes, they're complaining about the disgusting state of your path. I'm interested in what all these people are doing. Like, because there's a bunch of people just sort of walking right now. Are they headed for anywhere? Too crowded. Okay. Which I, I suppose, seeing that we're at. Uh, There you go. Seeing as we're at 900 guests and we only have this straight section and this like little plaza <clears throat> is fair. We probably need to work this so we can get around the whole lake here, but so it goes. Let's think about this planter here a little bit, what this becomes. So we have the Superman shape or home plate. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what I want to do with this. <clears throat> Yeah, I think I think that's kind of where it comes back to from what the suggestions were earlier, like a monument to the town. And if that's the case, it makes a little more sense that it would be more centralized. So almost like right, right here or here, probably right there. And then I think ideally we'd have some seat wall going around it. We can either do bigger seat wall or yeah, we'll do this. 
this is a very classic custom scenery trick is using the crown molding piece for uh, seating. And it doesn't quite work, but if you want to get fancy, you can throw in, we can, we can just have one, at least try it out. But throw in an invisible bench, and then sometimes it looks like they're sitting on the seat wall if you do it right. Sometimes it doesn't quite work out. We'll see if it sits there. Then next step up is to drop some of these. <clears throat> and then we can, okay, see, there we go. You got some people sitting on there. So if you do it as an invisible seat, um, it will often look pretty good. Oh, woo, woo. Curious if there we go. You have to figure out what this monument becomes. See what our let's start out with monument. I think it's just gonna be graveyard monument. And have a tour of terrible custom scenery. Not all custom scenery is a good thing. A statue. Okay. Dolphins. And giraffe. One of those big brain things. Invisible footpath, even more invisible. Uh, okay, we could do the horseman statue. Could do this statue quarter colorable full tile statue with birdcraft, too. Thanks, Liam. Oh, I don't want the unicorn statue. Pretty interesting options. It'd be cool if this base was colorable. Because <clears throat> I do like the idea of having the base. New style statue. Horses. Okay. Let's see what works. Okay. I think as long as it's the same color, we don't really see the bird crap because I don't really want to. Do like a green, I think in all likelihood, black is probably the best option. We can come in here with this. Very spoopy. Question is how narrow the spot is he standing on? Could we narrow this further? Or does that look bad? That looks bad. 
All right, so we will stick with not that. Okay. So we'll go black. You do hear doggo, you are correct. You're still working on the doggo cam coming coming soon to a uh, stream near you. I actually tried to get the uh, GoPro and all that, which is what I had been using for um, for those sorts of things, but unfortunately the GoPro does not want to cooperate any longer um, on streaming. It's flickering. I don't know what I'm doing wrong there, but no no current doggo cam. Uh, looks like we can't figure out the easiest way to listen here. Can we Theoretically, I should use the same, but that's that's fine. We can we'll keep the statue like that. <clears throat> and let's bring our pathway all the way around it. Bring it around town. Okay, we'll go around the well as as well, I guess. See this mass of people coming out. It's interesting seeing the giant mass of people come out and then circle around and immediately get back in line. But I guess it's not surprising when there's like no other rides. But, yeah, we had separated this out for future planter. I'm wondering if we separate this out further for planter that's got a actual something in it. How much do we block? How much do we block our building if we put something here? Turn right down the middle. The question is, does that does that is that bothersome? Like if I were to put two trees there. Blocks us this way. Does not block us this way. I don't know. I like my sight lines in general, and I am more apt to ignore landscape in order to maintain sight lines than I am not to, but. I don't know. Let's carry this picket fence though. The dog is once again trying to get the cat to play, and the cat says no. Okay, so I think we are just going to stick with the plants and all that. What might be nice is to expand this out you know, slightly, at least on this side. to allow us something. We do a low tree, maybe we do one of those fruit trees. Uh, I think we already used purple elsewhere. No, we had the 
this orange one. I think there might be. It'll stand out a little bit better as soon as I drop in some other um, landscape plants and stuff like that. Hmm. I don't. Feels too small. Like the next size up of something. I'm gonna feel too fat. Let's see what the Steve trees look like. I don't really want to block anything. I thought the shrubs worked. Well, let's see. We know it's going to stay, or we think it's going to stay narrow down here. So maybe we stick with this. And let's put this in place. Plant flower. Okay, garden. Put the plants above. Okay, we want the planks. Of that. That looks okay. Hello, I'm Board Toys. Welcome in. How are you this evening? Thanks for joining. We are in the process of uh, building out our uh, little park here we've been working on for uh, four streams now. And uh, sort out kind of this overall look. So we're in the process of Trying to put a little planter here, so we've been working on this area for a little while now. Probably, I don't know, 16, 20 hours into this, so it's taken a little while, but that's um, that's kind of what we expect for some of these. All right, get these diagonals right. Not entirely sure this is doing anything, but. I think I'm just essentially reversing it by pulling this one up, which fixes it. And as soon as I put the plants in, it sends it back. But that's all right. We can deal with that. Let me see if we have any more, like, colored type shrubs. Okay. We do have this one, which is colored, like, bushes. So we can easily throw some a little bit different shades of this in here. Give ourselves a little bit of variety. We can kind of do like a planted or a planter worth of bushes. We will do our green on green flowers here since we don't want flowers in this actual area. Um, probably will end up looking the best. Put this to fill in the space. Uh, okay. I could be all right with that. So let's stick with that. And. Maybe just to give us some variety down here. Kind of square this off. Put back that path. And we'll stick one there. And leave it at that. And there's enough density there that you can't really tell there's concrete under it. So that works. It's, uh, it's not symmetrical, which I'm okay with. I kind of like that, I think, more so. Um, so that's that's not bad. This little pavilion thing probably needs like a show board to tell us when um, when the shows are. So let's see. 
maybe what we do is grab the color that we're using for our information board here and then underneath of it drop the map rack and you can like grab a brochure You know, a little half. Oop. Come on, there it is. Got our little half one here. Okay. So that's not bad. Are there banned peep sprites? I, I don't know if there are. I I know there have been enough people who have done, you know, different setups as far as staff goes and things like that we can certainly freeze different staff members in place up top there and we can have like one of them who's walking around back and forth and we'll name them appropriate names for whatever show we're doing um and then whatever props and things else we want to put up there we can do that too so that may be part of what, what the option is uh let's grab So let's put it back here. I guess do we even need a fence? My, my propensity is always to fence things, and I feel like we don't always have to. Um, because I think it, it's kind of everybody's want to be clean and organized in RCT. You put fences over everything, but I really don't think it's necessary um, in a lot of cases, as long as there's reasonable herbs and things like that uh, to have a nice delineation of an edge um, but real parks don't have barriers absolutely everywhere there you go that looks all right let's see if i just type in band what we can get for okay there's ghost band and then banded arch. We can take a look and see what I know Cook County Fair, which I reviewed on the channel a little while ago, had a um had one. Let's take a look at that. I think that, that was where did I save that? Here we go, hide your portal. Right. Go. Okay, so it looks like they haven't taken the stage yet, but there's all the various equipment. The lights and everything security guards and all that, so nothing too major there. I'm trying to see if there's anything else I can take away from. <laughs> thing that I see quite offhand. I believe there was a, a Hard Rock Park one years ago. In one of the head to heads, I thought. This is Belgian guy who did this. Okay, again, no peeps. I think. Oh, that's fun. The uh, Doppelmeyer mountain glider concept. Neat. Anyway, let's let's get back, and I'm sure we can figure out some options. I think probably it'll be the security guards because they've got the darker uniform and everything. That'll probably be the best choice.
So if so here in the the other challenge is, is the pathway at a certain height. I'm curious. Another test. Question is going to be do the staff walk on it at this height? Oh, they sure do. Well, that's interesting. Can I build at this height? This is. Yeah, I sure can. Okay. All right. Well, that is better than I expected as far as that goes. So let's take this. Raise this up to the half tile. One. Two. It would be great if they could come out a little further, but that's that's fine. We can we can set them there. I have to name one of them like Mary Proctor or somebody. Somebody Proctor. How many peeps are in line for this? Holy cow! Hundred and ninety-seven in the queue. So this queue maxes out at one hundred and ninety-seven peeps. Wow. Let's. Uh, I'm curious to know. I'm gonna stick with. Like with Vicky F here, who has just gotten in line. Let's see how that goes for her. Okay. Yeah, it sure is popular, but I guess to that point, there's not a whole lot of anything else right now. There's 83 people in this queue, and only because the queue isn't long enough. I'm kind of a little curious to see what happens if I if I do that, if we can always get um, that. I have not cheated any yes yet. So we are still just open and doing it. It doesn't, it doesn't take a, a whole lot. I guess I don't know if you realize guest arrival through just closed rides or what because we've got or shops and stalls and things like that because we do have a lot of stalls um and i don't know if it's capacity based or anything i'm sure marcel could tell us but like i have these that are just kind of sitting here they're closed um so i'm not entirely sure what the what the idea is i mean i've got all the cheats enabled um no i don't have any soft guest cap plugin or anything like that let's just yeah they're just kind of here i was actually cleared it out just before well not just before the stream but um earlier after the last stream i had cleared it out That is strange, though, that it would be a it would be an issue like that. Let's get some right wider paths in here so we can drop in. Benches. I'm just going to make this invisible because it's easy now. Um, used to be that the best way to do this was just to select the invisible footpath option but now it's easy enough that we can do it that way okay this shop here seems like it probably wants something and I wasn't necessarily planning to do 
food, but it maybe ought to be, be something in here. So Salem Fries open for business. Okay. So really we're down to, as far as initial planned buildings, we've got something across the way here, which is going to be a little bit challenging in that we've essentially blocked our view from this side. So we're going to basically just have a facade that isn't doing a whole heck of a lot. And then we'll have this one on this side and then this one on this side, uh, which this is, in my opinion, sort of the primary viewing point into this area. Um, this is going to be sort of an oddball area by the time we're done because it'll sort of be like a dumbbell where you got a big open space here like a plaza and a big plaza over here connected by this little narrow strip that has the coaster coming off of it, which not necessarily a bad thing, but it's you can definitely tell it wasn't like master planned this way, which is sort of my goal in, in general is to make it look not super, super master planned as in like the park has grown over time. So that's that's sort of the intention, but um, I guess we unintentionally got to that point, though. Okay. Stream for a couple more minutes and then call it. And I, I do think I want to have this little kind of clapboard and steep roof type siding here. I don't necessarily want it to become the same look as Colonial Boston Harbor, which would be my only concern there. So we'll see. Um, we'll see how that works out. We might we might adjust that. Um, I might actually go for the darker, change this roof to black. Just kind of based on how nice and striking this one is, it might actually call that out a little more. Kind of overall. Why don't we do that? I do like this gray, and I will be using it pretty much everywhere, but this will give us a good brighter option to work with. So I need to change it for the trim. Oh, she get on? Oh, she did get on. Actually, that was not. It was not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Good for her. Hopefully, she's guy has a good time. She's smiling. That lighter gray is a gray that, that Swag uh, got me into when we built our uh, park in the January DK contest. Because um, it, it blends really well with the pathways. And honestly, I use it more because it, it works really well with the... Um, um, just as a construction material type gray. Like it's, it's suitably generic. Hopefully Vicky had a nice time there. Finish recoloring this and then we'll check in. All right. Too crowded here. I've already got an on-ride photo and I've been queuing for Crucible for ages. There. We've got an Extreme 97 Workbench 2021 Cuddly Toy, a map of Extreme 97 Workbench 2021, a Workbench Extreme 97 Workbench 2021 Umbrella, an empty can, an Extreme Workbench 2021 t-shirt, and an on-ride photo. Nice. Um, empty can probably means that I need more trash cans. We do need a name for this park at some point, which I guess is coming at some point. Right, we'll give you one bench. I want to definitely light the agility course here. Very lit. Okay. So, gift shop. Little plaza here. 
This prowl needs to get moved. Will the train just pick up? Huh. Train got less popular. <laughs> Old American adventure. Yeah, we'll start there. The question is, does Vicky now have all that change, or what happens? Yeah, it does change. Okay. It's cool that you can get different um, information as far as that goes. Not that it means anything to me, but it's interesting. Crucible, Carousel, Miniature Railroad 2, and Ritual. I like the Miniature Railroad better than that. Come on. Coaster is rocking. Everybody loves the coaster. I mean, I do love a good train ride, but still, come on. Okay. I do want to make this into a uh, covered bridge. At one point, Belgian guy had sent me some photos that he had suggested on that one, and then we really need to put a cover over this thing. So I may, I may either do that off stream or figure out what we're going to do and then do it. I also need to sort out what we're doing here as far as this goes because it might make more sense just kind of based on where we are with this to change this into this it's probably going to have a little nicer look because the poles end up looking a little beefy it kind of has that parkitect uh gigantic uh look the mesh was not necessarily what I was going for, but. No. This area does sort of live, live in no man's land at the moment. Um, as it is, it's not Salem necessarily, because I feel like once you cross the tracks, you're out of, out of Salem now, but you're not really in anywhere else. This was back when we were not necessarily going like full on themed. Um, I feel like each one of these episodes we've done, it's gotten slightly more themed each time. So uh, maybe not uh, the best way to think about that, but it has gotten more or increasing theme, increasingly themed every time we go uh, revisit this and things make less and less sense. So we just need to figure out a place for those and explain it a little better. Now we still have this uh, pretty sizable open triangle here that I don't quite know what I want to do with it because I don't want to build up something too heavy because I feel like um, you have a nice view of the coaster there and you don't really want to lose that. Um, I could see doing a couple of buildings and then some lower stuff. Like I could even see doing like a maze. Um, like maybe there's a building that goes here. Um, we could do sort of like a a little bit of a living history museum sort of thing where you have the um, the museum with like recreation of different areas and then you have like people living and, and working in those spaces. So we could do this as like a little farm area that um, we kind of have there and this is like the rural rural area here and and it overlooks the train and everything, so that that may be the play. Um, that may be a good good idea for how to set this up, and it fills in the space with minimal build stuff and all that. Although the question is, does that idea is it better suited for somewhere else? Like, is it better suited for the Roanoke area? Is it better suited for well, probably there? But I guess it's not to say that we couldn't have it elsewhere in the park. That it's sort of a Commercial amusement park, part educational park, part whatever, whatever it wants to be. Um, before we go, let's establish where this tunnel is going to end up. Um, let's see, where's my fence again? Wood fence. Okay, I kind of like the idea of the 
I kind of like the idea of this shooting through the supports because I do want to have some supports coming off of this that we then kind of build up. But maybe you enter that, maybe you enter it here, continues on through to this section and then ends here. Especially if we're going for like a three height thing. Because that gives us the ability to do. Yeah, I kind of think it would be kind. Of, it would be neat to have a bit of surprise airtime at the end of the ride. And that way, there's there's a little bit of of excitement towards the the very end as you just wrap up. And actually, I'd probably, probably pull this last one out and end it here on the slope. The only reason I say that is because I don't like the idea of this just kind of sort of peeking over the lift hill. Like, I'd much rather have it keep on the lower end. At some point, we'll build our maintenance area here as well. Um, this little plaza could be a nice option for screening our back of house space here as we wrap it around to the side. And then what we could do is have that entry point into the space right here. And then Philadelphia is continuing on this side. So it's just an easy kind of slide in and out. And that may be the best thought there. That was probably the right move going for the black here. Um, it may not be a bad idea to paint this one black as well. Um, but for now, we'll keep it for the gray. I kind of like the gray. Problem is, once you have your pathway as, as gray as it is, you you want that contrast. Just ever so slight contrast as far as some of these things go, but probably for the best. All right. Well, I think we will call it for today, though. And... Call it a success because we built these two buildings here. We put this little uh, cover there. We finished this planter. We did this statue here in the middle. Did a little bit of detailing throughout. We labeled all of our other stuff. Uh, we kind of talked about where we wanted it all to land, and we're, uh, we're pretty satisfied. So I think with that, I'm going to wrap up. Um, if you liked what you saw here today, uh, feel free to uh, click the follow button uh, and you'll get the notifications from Twitch when I go live. Right now it is Thursdays for Parkitect and weekends for RCT. Um, so keep an eye out for that. You can join our Discord, which uh, there's a link below uh, for that one. Um, on YouTube, where I post uh, most of my other videos, uh, feel free to follow me there. And uh, if you like this streaming well enough, then feel free to subscribe. Uh, if you're an Amazon Prime member, you can do that for free. So um, until next time, thank you all very much for watching. And we will catch you in the next one and talk to you later. Bye now.